Um, so yeah, my name is uh, Yen, obviously, and I will talk about uh, NetFlow, um, more specifically as the security uses of NetFlow in a backbone perspective. I mean, more specifically, uh, to look at the infrastructure part. Uh, so I'm not really interested, well, I'm, the point is not uh, to have a look at peer-to-peer uh, -peer or, or massive uh, events in the data plane, but more uh, events targeting the control and management plane, but whatever. Uh, so, there is mostly uh, two, two parts. Yeah, mostly two parts. Uh, the, the, the first part being uh, what's on the exporter side of the thing. So, uh, how one configures uh, NetFlow on its routers or things like that. And the second part is on the collecting side. So what to do with the exported data and what tools are available and some overview of what we can do with said tools. And then short conclusion as usual. Um, I, I, I have, a, so this is a part with slides actually. Um, I will, I have a, um, a live capture of the Nanog traffic uh, on my, locally, on, on my disk. So uh, rather than to present uh, screenshots, I will we'll just have a look uh, using some tool uh, in the traffic which was captured uh, in the first uh, few hour, previous hours. Uh, that's it. So to, to, to begin with uh, the basics, what's NetFlow? Uh, so everybody knows what NetFlow is, uh, but okay, just uh, this is a, a way for the routers to export some information regarding the, the packet forwarded. Um, yeah, so basically NetFlow is two things. Uh, a, 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 well, several things. A, a metering process on the routers and routing uh, devices and uh, a, a protocol uh, on the wire to export and, and work on those data. Uh, yeah, so for different uh, uses like real time or near real time because uh, flows are not exported really real time, we'll see that. And then for more long term and trending or whatever, you want to do with them, and forensics, that kind of, that kind of stuff. Uh, so at first, uh, NetFlow was and is pushed mainly by one uh, prominent vendor in the router land, uh, but I, this, is, this is now an industry standard, meaning that uh, this is in the, it's in the process of being uh, well, there is an IETF workgroup, IPFX, uh, working on normalization uh, stuff. And uh, uh, an important part, an important number of other uh, vendors beside vendor C uh, support uh, NetFlow, uh, support NetFlow. So this is quite an industry standard. The other uh, standard or aiming to be a standard would be S-Flow, but with, without the same uh, support, device support. Uh, so, okay, so yeah, other, other technologies, and crane, diameter, and S-Flow. Um, at one point, yeah, so when the IPFX workgroup uh, started to work on uh, flow-like export normalization, uh, they considered different uh, possibilities uh, to, to, to use as a base for the, uh, the new protocol. 
and so they choose NetFlow V9. So I will talk about the different flavors of NetFlow, but just to, to say that uh, there were different proposals from different vendors, uh, like SFlow, as I said, and then uh, NetFlow, Cisco NetFlow was chosen as the base for IPFX. So what's the, what's the flow uh, quickly? So two definitions, uh, first one being, well, lose one, but it works. So basically, uh, you have packets forwarded uh, on your routers, and yeah, some of those packets share some characteristics, and okay, you decide that uh, th this set of characteristics uh, def de define a flow. Okay, uh, same definition, more verbose. And so, well, actually, uh, on the wire, uh, what, what's the flow uh, exactly? Uh, so some key fields, a number of them, and some additional fields. Uh, I am talking here about the, the version 5 of NetFlow because I won't enter into big details, but there is different uh, versions of NetFlow um, historically, and so currently um, we are talking mostly about NetFlow v5, which is basically the standard, but NetFlow v9 is, uh, is pushing, so, okay. So a flow uh, version 5 is the key fields like source and destination uh, addresses, source and destination port, uh, the layer 3 protocol information, type of service, and the input IF index, and then some additional fields like yeah, byte count, packet count, uh, the start and end time of the flow, um, the TCP flags when available or when uh, relevant, of course, and some routing information like next, next hope, source and destination AS, when available. Uh, so a few characteristics uh, based upon that is that a flow really is about layer uh, yeah, three and four information. Um, flow, flows are unidirectional. Um, be it ingress or more recently egress, but uh, I mean that if we take, uh, I will say a bit more later on that, but well, when we want to look at traffic, what we have in mind is uh, layer seven. Well, when, when we want to do some analysis, uh, what we see is la layer seven traffic on the wire and but uh, the, the flow records which are exported basically split uh, the two ways of the layer seven communications or stream or, or conversation, uh, call that uh, whatever you want. And, and so you end up with two, uh, uh, with two records in both ways, uh, if I am clear. And okay, some other characteristics but yeah, that's not without cost for the router, like uh, memory, CPU, so things you have to take into a account uh, before, uh, before enabling NetFlow export on some of your box boxes. And yeah, okay, not the perfect solution, blah, blah. Uh, so, rational, NetFlow was uh, first appeared if I'm not mistaken, on 96, uh, on 96. So I, I'm not a Cisco guy, so uh, check with uh, your rep, but I, I think that's, that's the point. Uh, okay, so all techno, um, the truth is um, actually that a lot is happening in the, in the protocol and implementation front, so, and there is a lot of projects and jumping on the NetFlow uh, bandwagon, uh, so yeah, a lot of things are evolving around, okay, and even uh, with NetFlow being a known uh, techno, I mean, I keep uh, seeing in the uh, forums and the SP forum 
uh, yeah, I want to monitor uh, that uh, kind of layer, layer three, layer four information for some customer's link or, or on some uh, part of my backbone. Or, or should I uh, do that? Or what tool do you use to, or what can I do with NetFlow? I've heard about NetFlow. I don't know what. Uh, what, the, what the uses are or, or whatever. So, okay, e even being an, an old and well-known techno, I think that there is a room for, uh, well, I, I hope so, uh, for a tutorial uh, from the, the, the beginning, from the rotor side to, to the, the tools, actually. And yeah, other point to, to keep in mind is that infrastructure is, well, still, is a potential target one way or another. Uh, everybody, uh, yeah, you, you, you know that, but there have been several recent Cisco advisories uh, very recently, uh, a few weeks ago. So, I mean, uh, st stuff is happening in the infrastructure. When I talk about infrastructure, like everybody else, but I talk about, uh, yeah, obviously layer three and above stuff, uh, because, uh, but so uh, routers and infrastructure servers like uh, DNS, and so yeah, okay, infrastructure may be a potential target. And but what's needed actually is uh, actual insight. I mean, uh, there is a lot of uh, fan fantasms and and third discourses being heard, and uh, what we need, what you need uh, on, on your backbones, on your network, is is to know what's happening. Uh, is there actually packets, uh, attacks targeting your routers? Is there uh, even uh, low, low key profile, low profile attacks? I mean, uh, just uh, uh, dictionary attacks against uh, Telnet or SSH port or, or against uh, some of your IP space used by your infrastructure, stuff like that. That's important uh, to, to know, by the way. Well, that's my that's my point. So, uh, NetFlow versions. Uh, I talked about uh, NetFlow version five and version nine. Uh, so there is a different uh, version of the protocol. The thing is that uh, actually, yeah, I said that we are talking about two things: the uh, protocol on the wi on the wire and. Uh, 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 a process on the metering uh, side uh, to gather information prior to export. Uh, so this is really two dif different uh, things. And so in, in both uh, sides, uh, things continue to, uh, to be worked on, uh, like with the IPFX uh, working group and uh, Cisco, Cisco sorry, on its own keeps on uh, improving well, or uh, complexifying uh, sometimes uh, the, the stuff, uh, okay? And anyway, so uh, regarding uh, flavors or versions of stuff like, stuff like that, it depends a lot of uh, some uh, combinations of soft, well, uh, software, hardware, and the bundle that you have and yeah, combinations of those. Uh, meaning that, okay, some uh, vendor, uh, some non-C vendor, for example, uh, will uh, support, obviously, only version 5, for example, and only a subset of it, uh, meaning that some, some fields, which are part of the protocol, uh, will not be exported or filled uh, if you enable uh, NetFlow export or on, on some device, and yeah, if you, for example, Juniper supports uh, NetFlow too, and so NetFlow version five only for now, and there is some uh, particular reasons uh, too when you uh, enable NetFlow. So depending on on your hardware and software and. and and Vendor, as I said, there is many things to keep in mind and many particularities uh, just waiting uh, to bite you one, one way or, or another. So there is, there is no uh, universal uh, recipe to enable NetFlow. Just uh, 
yeah, it, it depends a lot of, of the context, but anyway. Yeah, so, sorry, I'm waiting. So, back to the versions, as I said, version five, de facto standard. Well, um, less and less, by the way, because, for example, uh, I said that I collected some traffic on the Nanog, um, the Na Nanog uh, network, so from the border router uh, so some hours ago, and, uh, and, and by default, uh, the version exported was version nine. So uh, things are changing anyway. So what is, so we, we saw what a flow, our flow uh, looks like uh, version five. Uh, on the version nine front, uh, you, okay, many things have changed by the way. So first, first of all, this is template based. Um, what it means that, um, okay, it brings a lot of flexibility. Uh, well, for now, the only flexibility that you will get with NetFlow V9 is that you, as a user, has to be very flexible um, because your routers won't be any more flexible than usual, meaning that you don't have the choice of the templates for now. And this is changing. I, I don't want to... Uh, to have somebody from Cisco raise and say, okay, no, that's, yeah, this is changing, but for now, flexibility means uh, you, you, you have to be very flexible. And so, okay, V9 brings some interesting uh, features uh, anyway, like um, other transport beside UDP, uh, like uh, IPv6 uh, support. Well, okay, this is another discussion. Uh, some more importantly, perhaps some uh, layer two fields like make addresses and some additional uh, well, additional layer three uh, fields like TTL, uh, IPID, um, and BGP next op information. Uh, probably not processed by your collector of choice. Uh, what, what I mean is that uh, an important number, well, yeah, more and more collectors support uh, NetFlow V9, but uh, for example, for the, the collector I will talk about later, later, um, they, they support uh, yeah, the templates and, and the V9 protocol, but they don't grok the additional fields yet. So meaning that you could well enable uh, on your router, uh, say, export of uh, TTL, if it makes sense for you. Uh, for now, it won't, it won't be used uh, on your uh, collector of choice. Well, many chances are it will not be used. Um, anyway, so NetFlow V9 is a moving target, uh, yeah, as I said, and some features are backport to uh, version 5 like transport independency. So uh, recently, um, NetFlow, NetFlow export on uh, Cisco routers gain, yeah, okay, transport independency, meaning that you are not, you can uh, enable uh, TCP, SCTP uh, for the export. Um, and then there is uh, NetFlow version 10, which is uh, also known as IPFX, so, which is a IETF uh, uh, beast on, in this front. It's based on, on a fork of NetFlow V9 because I said that uh, NetFlow V9 was chosen as a base uh, for the standardization effort. So, meaning that uh, NetFlow uh, V9, which is what's supported by your routers right now, well, depending on the iOS version and some configurations like that. Uh, but so, uh, this is not the same as what's working on uh, under the name IPFX. So, okay. And there is other versions like version one, which is, yeah, the first, and some uh, versions uh, which are used only, which are relevant only for switches, 
uh, like uh, version 7, uh, version 8, eight uh, bring some router based aggregation. Uh, but anyway, uh, now uh, even the, well, the switches, so layer 2, layer 3, uh, BIS, support um, version 5 too. So normally, uh, you, you should have on, on your collectors, you should collect only version 5 and perhaps version 9. That's the point. Uh, so, particular reasons, I said uh, support is not the same on all devices. For example, uh, not all boxes uh, from set or set vendor supports uh, NetFlow. So, uh, if this is a feature which is important for you, uh, it, okay, take that into account. Uh, and even when supported, I mean, for example, on some uh, layer three switches, uh, TCP flags are not exported. So, well, not a big deal, but uh, yeah, there is a lot of uh, particular reasons, okay. Uh, yeah, and on routers too, you have some particular reasons. Uh, so, when, when you want to enable uh, NetFlow on the 12 case, uh, you have that big caution, uh, big warning on every doc and every public uh, documentation that uh, saying that, okay, uh, all kind of trouble may, well, just do that during, a, uh, during the appropriate time frame. And then there is another caution, uh, which is less, less advertised, saying that uh, the way it's done on older uh, engines for the tw engines for the 12 Ks, uh, enabling full NetFlow export uh, puts uh, quite a, of burden on the memory, and so and for for the funny I'm not sure, but uh, for for the anecdote, um, uh, the cautions are, are too. So don't do that. Uh, I, I tried on a, on the 12 K, and and so you have two. 12 case and on one you you configure the NetFlow export and you lose connectivity with your box and so you check on the console and you see uh, funny messages like yeah, usual uh, be safe and distributed safe disabled due to low memory conditions and so you say oops and so uh, but all your your BGP peers uh, uh, went to the other 12K, and so the other 12K, which is uh, short on memory too, uh, start to, okay, but not, not, not a, a good idea, by the way. So do, do, do test on, on a lab, uh, not in production. So yeah, this was some uh, overview of what's NetFlow, and then on uh, the flow cache. So the, the principle of NetFlow is that basically you have one or several, uh, depend, depending of what we are talking about. So you have a, a memory cache which is kept on, on the routers, uh, uh, which is enabled not for, well, the wording is a bit uh, confusing. Uh, it's enabled, yeah, you enable NetFlow export and NetFlow capture per interface but the cache is global for all interfaces, yeah. Okay, and so you can tune uh, the number of entries uh, you will uh, keep anyway. And so the, the point how it works is that for each packet entering an interface, uh, so either you have a co corresponding uh, flow existing already, and so a number of fields will be updated, uh, like, uh, for example, yeah, obviously the bytes and packet counts uh, will be summed. Uh, the end time will be updated with the new, the new end time of the new uh, packet arrived. And uh, so TCP flags, uh, of course, uh, we are talking about TCP flags. And by the way, TCP flags are, are ordered together. So uh, you have that field. And so if you have a new packet entering with a, a, a TCP flag which was not seen before, it will be ordered with, with the other one. Or if not, if there is no already an existing flow matching the packet, uh, a new entry is created. 
and then you have an expiration mechanism uh, to, to uh, manage, to keep the catch uh, uh, low, and then some export uh, if configured. But uh, by the way, you can uh, configure NetFlow uh, without configuring the export. This is two unrela unrelated things, even if it makes, uh, it makes less sense anyway. And so expiration mechanism, I said, so basically this is uh, either, either we are talking about a TCP packet and so easy that uh, when you see a reset or, or fin uh, packet, uh, you, you expire uh, and export your flow or after a timeout for inactive flows, meaning flows uh, during the time there have been no new packets entering the catch or and uh, after a timeout for active flows, uh, meaning that uh, if you take a long uh, TCP session or whatever session, like SSH or tunnel or, or whatever, uh, it will be splitted uh, into, an, uh, into time, timed record, and so you will, you will have not big, you will have to reconstruct uh, uh, your record, meaning that a long SSH session will be splitted upon. Uh, many different uh, flows, many different records actually. And so yeah, when, when the catch is full, it will be uh, expired too. Yeah, sorry, I'm waiting for the laptop to. Uh, okay, so a basic example to export uh, a net, to configure the flow catch on a router is something like that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, first on the global configuration, uh, where, where you say that you want the flow catch, uh, you say the version, and uh, if you have uh, a BGP peering, uh, a BGP process on the router, you decide, you, you say if you want the origin AS or peer AS, okay, uh, self evident, and then per interface, you configure the actual. Uh, uh, flow uh, collection mechanism, uh, so ingress or egress, uh, by default, well, this is ingress, um, but the, the, the discussion actually uh, depends a lot of your, what, what uh, the kind of device we are talking about. For example, if you want to capture uh, um, uh, traffic, multicast traffic, uh, depending, uh, it may be inter interesting to enable egress uh, export, egress collect rather than ingress. So it depends of your requirements. But b basically the, the simple case is that you take every of your interfaces and you enable uh, ingress uh, collect. And so, yeah, you, with that, you are able to, to match uh, every packet back and forth, every traffic back and forth uh, forwarded by, by the router. Okay, uh, and with uh, version nine specifics, so you can add, as I say, but you can add uh, capture like uh, layer two or the TTL, uh, the, the VLAN ID, and yeah, some benign specifics, as, as I said. And then this is a part uh, on the layer two, three switches, uh, so ND, NetFlow data export, and so you have uh, yet other uh, particularism, uh, so just to, ex to export, uh, to, co to collect uh, the flows. So depending, and the, the point to keep in mind is that there is a flow mask on, on those uh, devices. And so by default, you don't capture uh, all the full uh, granularity of information, but uh, you will restrict to uh, only uh, the addresses without the ports or, so if you want full granularity, you have to, uh, to yeah, to say that. So from a security perspective, this is good. Uh, the, the more granularity we have, the better, of course. Now, from an operational perspective, uh, this is not the same. So it depends a lot of, of your box and OS are overloaded or not. 
and so uh, other uh, vendor, other uh, practices. So on Juniper, uh, NetFlow relies on adaptive service interfaces or whatever their name is. And basically, the, the way to enable uh, NetFlow is to, mm, so you define a sampling rule in the firewall uh, uh, statement and where you, you can put a sampling, uh, obviously can be, a sampling can be one, so one out of one, meaning no sampling. And then you define input filter, uh, which are called for every interfaces where you want to enable NetFlow collect and so, yeah, I, I have a, an example. I just I mangled a bit uh, the Juniper uh, configuration uh, just to fit that on the screen, but principle is there. And then just, well, um, one, one slide on FreeBSD. If you have on some parts of your backbone some FreeBSD routers, or perhaps not, uh, anyway, so there is uh, an, an in kernel, a kernel uh, net graph for, for those being familiar with FreeBSD. So there is that kernel based uh, framework, uh, which is called NetGraph, uh, which is a, a cool, uh, cool framework, cool network framework. And so there is, uh, with many different uh, nodes, uh, to, to enable very interesting features. Anyway, and so there is uh, the NetFlow uh, NetGraph node. So, and you can uh, use that with a uh, NetGraph uh, node for uh, the, the FreeBSD native packet filtering IPFW. And so, it, you end up with something like that. Uh, so that's uh, very convenient. Uh, I have, yeah, I have another example, but that's dead easy to define filters, I mean. So if you want to, to enable the capture of only a, a, a subset of the traffic or, or something like that. So, okay, the, the syntax is, okay, wh what it is, never mind. That's quite simple. But if you, you just want to enable I don't know why, uh, traffic for SSH, for example. So this is only a matter of uh, crafting uh, ACL in the filter, in the packet filter of the FreeBSD uh, box. So the syntax is, is, is uh, that simple. And so, yeah, oh, and uh, yeah, the bad news is uh, AS fields are not populated, even if you have a BGP speaking daemon on, on your FreeBSD. So, uh, if you, the purpose is to uh, to gather uh, the AS uh, fields and routing information, uh, don't use FreeBSD. Uh, the other bad news that I discovered is that it seems that uh, ICMP, uh, I, I have not uh, digged in actually to see if this is just a problem on, on my side or, or um, oh, I should push a bug report anyway. And so it seems that um, ICMP informations are not filled at all, meaning uh, type and code. Uh, I will talk about that uh, in, the f in some slides. But uh, so, okay, no ICMP uh, type and code if you use uh, FreeBSD with uh, NGNet flow. Um, yeah. So I talked about uh, the flow catch and O uh, data are expired uh, upon certain uh, circumstances. And so you, you have a way, as I mean, to keep the cage under control. I mean, so you can tune its size, uh, obviously. So uh, the default size of the cage, of the flow cage, depends a lot of your uh, hardware and its memory. Uh, you can uh, play with the edging of entries, meaning that uh, you can end that's a good idea to lower uh, to to lower uh, the export the active uh, timeouts and because uh, so as I said or perhaps not but it was written in a slide but the default uh, active timeout for flow for for record in the memory cache is uh, uh, 30 minutes and meaning that if you want 
to do near real time uh, analysis uh, with your records, uh, a long flow, uh, you, you will not collect it um, at least before, after, yeah, okay, you see there is, I will, ah, sorry, so it will be at least 30 minutes uh, during which you will not be able to see uh, some records of interest. So just you can lower those edging uh, timeouts. Uh, you, can you can enable and probably depending on the size and uh, the traffic considered, uh, you will need to enable sampling. Uh, so, okay, I will talk about sampling a bit later. Uh, you can do input filtering if you know that uh, you don't need uh, to look at that kind of traffic or you need to only collect that and that part of the traffic, uh, you can put filters which are defined like uh, policy maps on Cisco. So to say, okay, I'm in only interested by the traffic matching uh, those uh, layer three, layer four uh, kind of information. And then I talked about flow mask before, which is the way on the catalyst to, to, to to lose some granularity, but okay, and to manage more more traffic if needed. I don't know what my laptop is doing during this time, but okay. Anyway, uh, some performance con considerations. So uh, each entry, each flow record in the memory cache has uh, a size, and I, which is uh, yeah, 64, 64 bytes. So. Okay, um, I talked about uh, the version eight of NetFlow, which brings uh, aggregation uh, router side. So meaning that uh, when you have routers supporting uh, uh, version eight and that you enable uh, aggregation, you will end up creating another cache uh, in which uh, data are aggregated, for example, uh, by uh, um, by NetMask or by a number of fields that, where you can uh, play with. And but uh, by the way, aggregation so is collector friendly because of course you you uh, decreases a lot uh, the traffic exported, the record exported. But uh, this is uh, more costly CPU CPU wise. So the point being that uh, the less the router is doing and beside routing, uh, the better. And so. Uh, that's the job of the collecting process to to do uh, the CPU in intensive tasks, not, not the router. Um, for some platforms, this is done uh, in, in hardware, basically uh, only uh, except for the export uh, by itself. So it's not that CPU unfriendly. And okay, so before enabling it, enabling that, sorry, uh, just yeah, you plan. You test and uh, as usual, I mean. Sampling, sampling or not. Uh, so this may not be a choice. Uh, well, the decision to sample or not, because depending on, on your traffic, uh, okay, you may need to sample. Um, so the, we, we are talking about different kind of sampling, by the way. Uh, there is flow sampling versus packet versus time sampling and deterministic versus random. So for example, uh, packet sampling is to sample one packet of, out of 100. And okay, and if this is time sampling, so you sample every uh, 10 seconds, for example. And okay, if you have randomness, uh, this is great because uh, without, with deterministic sampling, you may you may lose uh, uh, some burst. You may not see some burst uh, in the traffic because you sample at every regular interval, I mean. So anyway, so the, the choice is not yours, meaning that uh, the, the, the type of sampling that, that's available on your box does not, uh, yeah, that's not your choice. That's, it depends on your box, okay, and the iOS version considered. And, and whatever. So 
you may need to enable sampling. Of course, we are talking about security. So as I said already, but uh, the more granularity that you get, the better. But again, this may not be uh, possible. So uh, trade-off as usual. And so if we want to, to look at as a cash flow in real time. So we are not talking about exporting for now. We are, we are talking about, yeah, collecting, connecting, sorry, uh, on a router and just uh, have a look at the traffic. And even without exporting and collecting the records, uh, when something is going wrong, um, this is interesting to have this feature, I mean. So, okay. And so beside, uh, so this is the main, this is a way to, to query the, the main uh, flow catch. And there is also a, a top talker sketch. So in recent iOS uh, releases, uh, it was in the T-train. I'm not sure uh, it has been pushed into the main uh, releases. Uh, anyway, so I mentioned that because this is not interesting, but so the, the, the purpose is to create some dedicated catch where the router keeps uh, the top tokers of the networks. So the point is that uh, you have to enable that, uh, that second uh, flow catch. And during configuration time, you have to uh, define the number of entries you want to keep into that catch and the sort criteria. So, okay. And an example, so self-evident. And there is another feature which is called, uh, okay, which is called the dynamic top tokers, uh, where you should check with your iOS version again, and where in that case, a dynamic top tokers that you can really query. So the, we are talking about your, your main catch flow. And so you can query dynamically uh, that catch flow and so define in a dynamic fashion um, uh, the sort uh, criteria, for example. And so you can restrict the output matching only a subset of the fields and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so in the Juniper case, uh, there is this, uh, I just, I don't want to, to, to do any, I, I, I like every vendor uh, a lot, uh, but there is this cool uh, CLI, I mean, where you can uh, use a pipe statement and to just match a subset of the output and just trim the output and so that's quite powerful, so, okay. And my examples would not be complete without uh, FreeBSD. Uh, so you have that uh, flow CTL uh, uh, CLI just to query your catch. And of course, uh, you have the usual uh, grab, sort, uh, cut, whatever Unix uh, tools. Export, so uh, we, we saw how to uh, enable, sorry, uh, the metering, the net flow metering process on the routers and uh, the flow catch and how to look at uh, the, the catch. And so our, our goal here is to export the data actually, not, not to keep that on the routers. Uh, so the way it works is that when upon expiration, so we saw the expiration mechanism on, on the catch, uh, upon expiration, flows are uh, exported if export is configured. And so they are all packed together, uh, um, okay? And they are sent on the wire on a UDP datagram. So there is a, a NetFlow header with a version with a sequence number with the number of records which are exported. And then you have uh, those records which are packed together on one uh, datagram, so between one and 30 flow records per uh, export. Uh, 
Okay, you can do loss uh, detection because you have a sequence number, but yeah, there is no provision for retransmission, obviously. Yeah, we are talking about UDP, but uh, at, at the application, at the, at the protocol uh, level, at the application level, there is no uh, retransmission uh, either. So, I mean, you can detect that you uh, have some loss, uh, but nothing more. Yeah, sorry. So the way to export, uh, to, to configure the export on, on the Cisco router is, okay, so IP flow export, you, gave, you give the destination uh, address and a port, and now a protocol, like I said, like uh, UDP or SCTP, and a source, so the loopback may be a good idea. Uh, always the example on, on Juniper, so, okay, syntax is what it is, but, okay, this is pretty self-evident. Uh, and then on FreeBSD, of course, again, others. So, uh, just uh, for the sake of it, because you, you don't need that, but uh, there is other uh, software-based uh, NetFlow metering processes, exporters, uh, if needed, uh, sometimes, yeah, okay, we never know. Uh, so, mostly they are based, well, there is two, two families, but uh, mostly they are based on uh, PCAP, so uh, you have some uh, PCAP process and capturing the traffic real-time and recreating uh, NetFlow records and for export on the wire. Uh, using the, the, the usual NetFlow protocol, I mean. So you have a number of uh, projects uh, existing, um, okay? And you can have other, other sources like uh, firewall logs. So there is one solution for NetFilter. Uh, there is one tool for PF, packet filter uh, logs. So just you have a process passing uh, uh, the logs of your uh, firewall and, and crafting uh, NetFlow records following that. Uh, the, the, well, the, the, the idea here is that uh, it may be useful, well, that kind of tools may be useful more in a forensics way, for, for example, so you, you, you have some uh, packet capture uh, or whatever, and you want to use uh, regular NetFlow tools on that uh, for a number of reasons. And, okay, this is a way to, uh, to do that. Uh, ex exporting, so uh, we m you may want to improve reliability of export. Um, the first thing that you may do is to configure multiple destinations. Uh, well, at most two, but uh, you can do that, so uh, yeah, on, the, on your routers, depending on the hardware vendor, on your routers you can configure yeah, at most two destinations. Um, you can export to a multicast uh, address, uh, to a multicast aware collector, uh, and so that's pretty convenient because out of the box you are provided with redundancy, uh, if needed, uh, scalability, and collector diversity, meaning that uh, from my own experience, there is not one collector solving uh, all problems. Uh, so you end up with several different tools uh, to work on the same uh, set of data, basically. And so a, a solution like multicast uh, makes it easy to just uh, stack up new collectors or to, to test another brand or another commercial tool. Uh, you just stack up on the, on the pool and, okay. Um, to improve uh, reliability, uh, other ways to consider using other uh, transports like SCTP. Uh, SCTP. Uh, so, as it seems, I've not followed uh, recently, but SCTP uh, is a, a must, uh, SCTP support is a must in the IPFX uh, draft, actually. So, 
So, uh, but when I tested that uh, recently, so Cisco routers can export over HTTP, no problem. And quite uh, some months, some weeks, some months ago, uh, HTTP support was committed to in the FreeBSD tree. And so my first, uh, my first point was to say, okay, just uh, let's, let's, let's uh, do some tests. And the problem was to find a collector supporting uh, HTTP actually. So I ended up uh, testing that with NTOP, which is not really a collector either. Uh, but anyway, NTOP supports SCTP too, so, okay. Uh, some uh, considerations that, which are important to keep in mind. Uh, so I talked about the unidirectionality uh, so of the records exported and also of the, traf the, uh, yeah, the traffic exported, so meaning that routers, uh, this is, this is uh, Ah, so the information export is, is from the routers to some collector, uh, probably more in the inside part of the network. So, okay, so this is UDP based. Uh, there is no crypto checksum whatsoever. whatsoever. Uh, so, well, so no authentication of the exporter uh, in any fashion. And, and you, uh, you export 48 uh, bytes long record for every for every packet, meaning in, in the event of denial of a denial of service, uh, where you can have a lot of small packets, you will end up exporting uh, 48 bytes long records. So that's another denial of service, I mean. So, okay. Anyway, you may want, that may be wise to protect the link uh, between exporter and collector. Uh, if not, uh, yeah, we can imagine an attacker uh, crafting rogue uh, net flow records uh, and to bury com completely your legitimate collection under, under rogue records or, or other uh, things like that. So yeah, ICLs or URPF to check for anti-spoofing, uh, TCP wrappers uh, mechanism or alike uh, are of uh, use actually. So it was for the router side of the things. Uh, okay, and now uh, we'll go to the collect uh, side. Uh, what should do a collector on my mind? Um, well, we are, we are talking about, uh, first we are talking about different uh, things. Um, because under the name collector, you, you will find very different tools with very different uh, purposes, uh, of course. And so from my own perspective, I'm talking about uh, keeping a per, per record granularity because the purpose is to be able to do forensics or to do analysis uh, at some point in time, back in time, uh, as long as your uh, storage capacity uh, affords you. And so, per record granularity, uh, aggregation facilities, uh, because when you end up with a lot of uh, records, uh, you need to do aggregation on the data and to have other views to be able to spot things. Uh, versatility, meaning that, well, some, to some tools are very dedicated to a given task, meaning uh, some, tool, some tool will, will be uh, dedicated for DOS uh, detection. Some other will be dedicated for uh, performance, uh, performance monitoring or, or a lot of different uses like that. And um, as an analyst, you, you, you never know what, what kind of, what, what thing you, you will want to look under traffic uh, you are after, meaning so versatility is important because you are not uh, constrained into a given uh, schema of, of digging into things. Um, a powerful CLI is important um, and graphs, 
are rather important because no matter what the CLI is, when you have some amount of data, the only way to, to make sense of that data is to have cool graphs, no matter what. So, and yeah, all, all of these can be split over different tools. So as I said, uh, you may end up using different tools even for the same set of data, even for the same job, I mean uh, security perspective only, and just using two different tools, uh, for, yeah, for example, and, and so um, previous job, I was working for a satellite operator in Europe, and so we use two different tools, one uh, commercial one, uh, from a vendor in Michigan, and one open source one, uh, which I will name because I will talk about that open source one, which is NFDump and FCN. And so the, the only fact to have two different tools, uh, well, this is rather convenient to look at the same problem with two different set of, of tools and two different ways to, to present the information. And some uh, problems are difficult to spot with one, and easier with the other or the reverse, you, you see the idea. So nothing prevents you, uh, well, ap after that it depends on your capacity storage again uh, and your time and uh, your teams and a number of different things, but this is not technical anymore. Uh, and so as an analyst, well, what, what you have to, what are your duties as an analyst? Well, easy that, basically, uh, just relax with a coffee in front of pretty graphs this is all that you have to do. Well, uh, perhaps a bit more, but I mean, uh, so you look at graphs, you check your top ends, whatever uh, n and whatever uh, meaning uh, value we are, we are talking about, and just build different filters to, to look at the traffic with different perspective and to, to be able to, to spot some things we, which which, uh, which uh, if not, would go, would go undetected by, okay. So the purpose is, yeah, to, to put filters and to say, okay, I'm, uh, I'm interested in that subset of traffic. Uh, and so having a look at only traffic targeting uh, infrastructure. Uh, so what's going on on the control and management planes more specifically? Um, what are the look? of my BGP session, for example, may I uh, learn things by just looking at the flows of my BGP stations? Or maybe not, or maybe not. I will give a, a screenshot. Um, so what the traffic directed uh, spe specifically to, to my uh, AP range used by the infrastructure on my network? Uh, what's the outgoing traffic from said addresses? That's important too, because uh, yeah, okay, routers are, are, hardly, are hardly servers, I mean, so there is not a, a lot of outgoing traffic uh, originating from, from their own uh, management ad addresses, I mean, so that's important, that may be important to, to have a look at that. Uh, some more con consideration to, to keep in mind, I said that already, but uh, we are talking about some very, very IP-centric uh, thing, uh, NetFlow. Uh, this is somewhat changing with uh, V9, uh, with some layer two information, as I said, with better, uh, with some MPLS uh, support up to, up to, I don't remember the number, up to three or four labels, I'm not sure. Um, but obviously we are not talking about uh, some, uh, any over, wh whatever over whatever, uh, encapsulate, uh, encapsulate, sorry, encapsulation scheme friendly uh, monitoring tool. Uh, meaning that, okay, obviously you only have layer three, layer four, so all which is IP over IP or UDP over IP or layer two over uh, whatever, uh, you will have a hard time. So the, the, the best you can do, for if, if we are talking about um, uh, IPsec tunnels or the whatever tunnels, 
uh, if they are identified, I hope so, on your network, uh, in your management. The, the, the best you can do is to capture the information just before uh, the one endpoint tunnel, okay? Just so to have the full granularity and to capture uh, the traffic just after the remote endpoint so to have the decapsulated traffic again. Uh, okay. Uh, I said that TCP flags are blended, uh, ordered together. Uh, so, so for a full uh, TCP uh, session uh, with uh, the end check and with a data exchange, uh, what we end up with is a rec with two records uh, in two different ways, I said, with all the flags basically set. Uh, so, of course, you have a SYN and the ACK, and you will find a FIN or RESET. And so there is no uh, individual TCP flag granularity, except that, uh, of course, you will find records uh, on, your, on, your, on your, yeah, records captured, collected, um, with only, for example, one or two flag sets. So, uh, it, it, uh, this is an example with NF dump. I will talk about uh, NF dump and how it works uh, more in details in, the, in a few slides. But just the example, the logic is, is there. So I mean, the, the point, the purpose of uh, the first query is to just look at all the traffic, uh, all the records having only the scene flag set. So the scene and not any other uh, flag, obviously. Uh, uh, the second query is I want uh, the records having uh, the reset flag set, maybe uh, along with the ACK flag set, but not other uh, flag. So what you are looking for uh, is a burst of SYN packets in one way and burst of reset packets in the other way around. So meaning it could be a large uh, scan or some other event like that. So this is the best that you can do when it comes to uh, TCP. You can do queries in, on every, uh, with every TCP flag combination, but I, I mean, if you have a, a full completed TCP session from the first scene to the last fin, uh, yeah, you have n no granularity, so Okay, and so I said that before, but layer seven st streams conversations, whatever the name, are splitted at least, uh, yeah, at least uh, upon two different records. So as an analyst, uh, that's not always convenient. I have a slide on that later on. Uh, and yes, the other uh, orthogonal problem is that the source and destination, I, as we uh, see it, um, I, as you see it as we see it on the, our net pro records does not match uh, the sockets notion of client and server uh, and and yeah that's a pity uh, I, I mean that uh, in certain cases that's yeah that easy to know which side which side initiated the traffic and which side on which side there is the server and, but in many, many cases, uh, there is no, is no way or no easy way uh, to decide that except by applying uh, more or less working heuristics on your traffic and say, okay, I, okay, more on that later, but. Uh, lost, lost in, well, lost in collection, a, a very uh, low uh, key f uh, figure. I mean, but even on very, very small, uh, very, very small setting with three, uh, uh, three pole line, uh, two borders, we are talking about at least uh, seven gig of data per day collected. Uh, Christopher Moreau on the uh, NSPSEC uh, buff in yeah, some hour ago talked about that on, on their network, they, they were talking about uh, terabytes of, of data per day, something like that. So, meaning that it's quickly a lot of data. 
uh, even on, on, on a small uh, on a small ISP, ISP platform, you will end up quickly with uh, tens of gig of data per day. Uh, okay, so I'm talking I'm talking about not 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 sampling here, but uh, okay, this is a really huge comfortable amounts of data to look at. Um, with that said, what you can do besides uh, prune all data and so first midterm strategy uh, is uh, compression. You can com compress uh, your data. I'm talking here about uh, flat uh, files, flat, flat file storage, sorry. Uh, um, yeah. So Depending on the tool you use, uh, they will store your data on some different uh, kind of storage, like binary uh, flat file, which is the most efficient, basically. Uh, it, it may be in a, in a SQL uh, database. It may be, okay. So for first uh, thing, if, if, you, if you can, depending on your storage backend, you can compress older data uh, for whatever meaning of older you, you may want to put. And long term, you have no other choice but uh, to prune regularly uh, old data and perhaps keep uh, some, some aggregated uh, views of the network. For, for example, only uh, the top end, the, the top end uh, per month, for example. So the, the first 100 uh, bandwidth heaters on your network every month or something like that with different criteria for the tops, but okay. Uh, flat file, well, there is only this database temptation because it looks so, so cool. And I, I know that a great number of uh, very clever people are storing that in a SQL database, but there is uh, so much of, uh, of an overhead uh, over that. Anyway, so I'd, the, the most efficient storage is really binary flat files, but of course, uh, having that in a SQL database uh, enable of kind of interesting queries as well. So uh, yeah, it's up to you. Uh, other, other way to, to think about that is uh, just so the, just store the row, the bulk of your data on flat uh, binary uh, files and send uh, associated data in the database like, uh, like for example, met matrices of traffic or, or some uh, resolution information uh, of some sort or some aggregated da data one way or another. And so keep the row, uh, uh, the row meet into quick uh, to retrieve format and then use uh, SQL database uh, just by side to, to store related data and do the queries on, on the SQL and just retrieve. With, with what to you retrieve on the SQL database, you are able to look further onto your uh, binary. Um, so the, the, the point is that, uh, well, each tool uses its, its own format on disk and there is no normalized on disk format. Um, so it may be uh, a pity or not, I don't know. Uh, there is not, obviously there is not. So the point is that if you end up using different tools for the job, uh, you will hardly be able to just use a common uh, store of data, but you will need to duplicate uh, n time the, the data you want to, to, to look at, uh, depending on the, the tools you use. So, uh, so some popular collectors or tools to, to, to look at NetFlow and work on NetFlow data uh, there is, uh, um, I just uh, uh, last word uh, regarding the, this database issue. For what's worse, um, in the commercial uh, front, in the commercial world, 
nearly all commercial uh, vendors uh, proposing solutions uh, evolving around NetFlow, so more in a security perspective, but anyway, use a combination of the two, as I said. So the raw data on flat files on disk and some Postgres or, or MySQL installation beside to store associated data. Okay, anyway, so there is a lot of different uh, tools to work on with NetFlow data, uh, both open source and commercial, uh, okay, with different uh, strengths and weaknesses. So just some names, uh, Arbor PicFlow, uh, which is, I don't want to, but which is really a great, great uh, tool. Um, I've not tried LandCorp, uh, Cisco Mars, this is not, well, depend, depending on what you want to do, but this may not be what you want to buy. Anyway, and so Q1 Labs has uh, an offer to, um, okay. And in the open source front, uh, you have, yeah, the, the old and efficient and no matter what uh, flow tools. Um, yeah, uh, there is the older uh, CFLODI from KEDA uh, you will find Argus, uh, Silk, uh, and NFDump, NFSEN. Uh, okay, I, I have a lot more slides on NFDump, NFSEN. And so others, which are not really collectors, but tools to, which are working on NetFlow data on, or NetFlow-like information, like Agri, uh, which is an interesting tool, uh, by the way. Um, Panoptis, which is a denier of service specialized kind of tool. NTOP, which, well, you all, you all know NTOP, I'm sure, but, so this is not a collector. It's my, my point, okay, NTOP is not bad. Uh, that's a pretty interesting tool. This is a memory hog, uh, for sure. Um, last time I tried it, that was not uh, a monument of stability, but it may be me only. And, and, and it does not collect. So, I mean, it gives you a, an overview of the traffic uh, exported, but you are not able to, to, to do forensics and, and to look actually at, at your records. So, net, net NTOP is out of scope. Stager is, is, is basically in the same category. That's a cool tool, uh, but keeping only a very, very aggregated view of the data uh, so more for to have uh, trending and, and bandwidth and so on uh, and consumption and so not what we are looking after. So uh, flow tools, my take on that. Uh, there is a lot of projects, uh, in-house projects using uh, flow tools. So. Uh, if you use that, that's perfect. That's a very, very good tool. I'm, I'm not trying to, to say uh, bad things or, or whatever. So this is a historical uh, collection and analysis uh, package because all, all those tools are doing both the, the collecting uh, process of, of the things and uh, they have the client front ends uh, to let you dig into the data collected. Uh, there is many, many pages and issues associated uh, scripts and, and uh, floating around and contributions and you know, ma many, many things. There is a huge user community. I have no uh, figures, but okay. Uh, well, the CLI is, is in my, uh, well, okay. I'm not that fond of the CLI of flow tools, but uh, that's only me probably. And with flow tools, you, you will find a number, of, sorry, of, uh, of graphs of uh, with. Uh, so you have flow scan, you, you have CU flow, and others like that. So the great thing is that you are not tied with uh, uh, some graphical front end. You have flow tools on one side, and you can you have different uh, possibilities as a as a graphical front end. On the minus side is that okay, they are not uh, tight, tightly coupled together. So of course. Uh, that's not exactly maintained. Uh, that's not necessarily a problem. I mean, because, okay, if it, it works, no need to be maintained, uh, of course. Uh, for example, there is no version 9 support. Uh, um, 
So Russia 9 uh, has brings all kinds of complexity and maybe uh, quirks uh, with it. But as I said, uh, the network, the record collected a few hours ago by default were exported uh, using version 9. So uh, the router co could have been uh, co configured uh, with version 5, no matter what, but not supporting version 9 may be more and more of a, a problem in the future. Um, okay, anyway. Um, other uh, versatile, in the versatile category, uh, other uh, tool, which is an FDump and FSEN. Well, this is two sets of tool, an FSEN being uh, the CLI uh, and collecting and CLI part, and FSEN being the, the, the graph, graphical front end. So uh, I will talk about uh, this one for different reasons, but the design is said to be clean and modular, so you know what that means. Uh, there is, the CLI is very, very uh, powerful and at the same time simple. I mean, uh, the filters are in the pickup-like uh, fashion, so uh, to uh, just query a subset of your traffic, you, you use uh, the syntax you are accustomed to uh, with TCP dump and the like, so that's very convenient. The, the good point is that so uh, there is an FSEN as a, as a graph uh, front end, so they are tightly coupled together, uh, so it brings all kinds of interesting possibilities. It takes input from NetFlow v5, uh, v7, and v9 transparently. Uh, so, but in the v9 case, uh, not all fields are are supported. As I said, if you configure uh, on your router uh, export of, say, TTL field, uh, an FDump will not be able to, well, it, it will take the, the traffic on the wire uh, quite fine, but it will not store uh, that field. Uh, yeah. And it takes input from SFlow uh, if needed, so that's pretty cool actually. It's actively maintained by a very uh, cool guy, um, Peter Ag uh, from the switch.ch. And so, and Peter is really uh, responsive. I mean, if you have some suggestion, some uh, bug report, some whatever, some ID that you want to be pushed, uh, you are more, more than welcome. There is a mailing list and so you can, you can contribute and, uh, okay. Now for example, the, the, some, some days ago I reported uh, privately because I, we were on, okay, whatever, a, a bug regarding ICMP uh, decoding and I, I had a patch in the, the two following hours, I mean, so really responsive. There is uh, a, a plugin system uh, so that's great, so th that's an easy way to uh, build more capability out of uh, an FDump and FSEN. Uh, the, maybe the problem is that there is not a lot of plugins available, uh, so some people are using in-house plugins uh, privately, but there is no common repository of plugins, and so okay. There is some patches to like, okay, NF split or Twinter or patches or external contributions. Uh, more on that later. There is a steadily growing uh, community, by the way. Um, so on the very, very good points, versatile, so you can use an FDUM for troublesho network troubleshooting, all kinds of troubleshooting, uh, performance uh, considerations, security, whatever, uh, be it on for real-time data or long-term trending and or forensics or so, uh, yeah. And it comes to with a uh, flow tools to an FDUM converter. So Peter had, yeah, very, very nice move. So yeah. And so the winner is obviously, uh, so an FDEMP and FSEN uh, with some more details on the architecture front, uh, you have two processes, uh, NFCAPD and SFCAPD3, which are responsible of collecting uh, the data coming from the, 
from the network, so NetFlow for one and SFlow for the other. Those demons uh, do absolutely no pre-post processing of the record, so the data is read from the network and written to the disk in fixed size uh, binary uh, files, so five minutes. Uh, and they made the mux to other collector if you want to uh, use another brand or another type of collector besides, yeah, you can just uh, configure an FCAP day to replicate all the traffic received to another uh, address. And so you have an F dump on the uh, client side to read you know, the data uh, stored and uh, work on that. And you have some other, like an F replay to replace the traffic uh, expire and F profile to manage profiles and yeah. Okay, and you have an FCN which graphs uh, the information based on RD tools and which act as a front end to an FDM queries uh, with a plugin management system. Installation is r rather simple actually. So uh, you can download uh, the tables on SourceForge. Um, you have two branches basically, stable, a stable branch and snapshots. Uh, currently, uh, there are snapshots for the uh, upcoming 1.3 NFSN release. Uh, it brings major, really major usability improvements. Uh, so, okay, but uh, there is some not stability problem. Peter, if you hear me, but uh, this is really a work in progress. So, you may see a new snapshot every two days or so. Uh, fixing, fixing uh, the problem of the previous snapshot and bringing perhaps some more problems. So you are, uh, okay, you know. Anyway, there is an upgrade pass provided between uh, releases, snapshots, whatever. So you are not supposed to lose data when you upgrade uh, from one to another version. Uh, to install compile and dump, all you need is basically a C compiler and as for an FSN, what you need is Perl, PHP, RRD tools, and so, okay, PHP extension like session and socket. Uh, you may need to bump the maximum number of uh, system five IPC semaphores uh, because it consumes one per uh, source, per collector, so, okay. An F dump. So, principle is simple. It reads an, an F capped uh, stored files, and you can use uh, pick up pick up like filters, I, as I said, and okay, and you can do all kind of uh, interesting aggregation, uh, post processing. So, for example, aggregation uh, per subnet. If you want to have a look at the traffic, but uh, you want to aggregate on Sledge 24 or, or whatever, and you can produce uh, the top uh, ends uh, consumer of by flow or packets or bytes or whatever and order the results. Uh, okay, and then display. Uh, so, an, uh, yeah, and display, uh, sorry, you, you have some uh, predefined uh, formats for the output and you have also user defined. Uh, so, an example, uh, it supports. Uh, the format, uh, the format uh, style of uh, formatting, sorry. Uh, so predefined formats where you can say that you want uh, yeah, the classic uh, output and long extended to have more data like the TCP flags, uh, if any. Uh, pipe is actually uh, uh, the more scriptable uh, output where all fields are separated by pipes. And row where you can have all the fields dumped uh, okay, and you can define your own own uh, filters format if needed. If you want to display only uh, the duration and yeah, source and, and destination address and port, so something like that works. Uh, another example of uh, of defined uh, output to uh, to display uh, AS matrix traffic. Uh, so, okay. Uh, if you if you really need to, you can define your own uh, your own uh, 
formats. And so in nfdom.c, uh, the author actually uh, explains how to, to, to define that. So that's, that's quite uh, easy, uh, actually, if you need some really user-defined uh, output of your own for whatever post-processing that you may need. You can do that and you have to, uh, so you read the instructions in nfdom.c and recompile and that's it basically. And so it was for the nfdom part and for nfsen uh, you have a, a rather explicit configuration file where you, you will uh, put forth various passes like where are uh, installed the binaries, where are installed the front end, uh, the data repository, whatever. And, okay, and some uh, watermarking, uh, this watermarking, uh, and stuff like that. And this is how it looks. Uh, I go really quickly on the screenshots because I have live screenshots, as I said, so much better. And uh, data organization, uh, so you, you can organize on this the data in, with different schemes, so depending on yeah, your configuration file. Uh, so you can decide to have all the data uh, collected, sorry, in one big uh, directory, but it will uh, fill up pretty quickly uh, with five minutes uh, uh, slot files, or you can have yeah, different hierarchies depending on your needs. Um, and data organization, where well, profiles, we'll, we'll see that uh, later, managing profiles. You can manage, so profiles, we'll see what profiles are, but you can manage profiles using the CLI or with a web interface, actually. And so just an example of building a, a profile to look uh, more in details of, yeah, UDP traffic on some given port. Uh, this is how it works, yeah. and channels, but we'll see that detail. Uh, okay, I, I will switch. Yeah, uh, so actually this is a traffic captured, uh, well captured, the net flow, uh, as exp the net flow records as, as exported on the border router of Nanog uh, from yesterday afternoon till uh, right after I started to talk here, right? Um, so this is the main uh, tab panel. Uh, yeah, okay. And so in the graph uh, tab, you are able to, uh, to have a look at the different, uh, uh, at the traffic uh, using different metrics with yeah number of flows and packets and and bytes, I mean, and then you have a detail uh, tab where you can do actually uh, queries. So I mean, uh, it, if you want to work on some, I don't know. and just do Yeah, okay, so you see the ID basically so you have your, your graphs with the traffic uh, and you are able to uh, yeah, define some, uh, some time window and build queries to look actually at the traffic which was collected. And uh, the nice thing is that you are able to define your uh, filters and profiles to look at the traffic with graphs. Um, so an example, I, I built uh, 
a few uh, filters uh, to look more in details at the traffic. And so uh, defining some common uh, uses of uh, some, some pattern, some network pattern, like uh, tunnels, uh, web, well, slammer, <laughs> uh, Windows traffic, win Windows verbosity, uh, mail. Um, so actually, uh, to do that, Yeah, I define I define a profile yeah, called main, and yeah, in that profile you define channels on it. Each channel being given uh, a filter of traffic. So and so channels are I, I don't know perhaps some uh, some of you uh, had uh, some previous experience with uh, older with a stable branch of an FCN, but I can promise that uh, there is. The, the channel stuff is completely new and is rather powerful. Before that, you were, you were stuck basically with one filter per profile. Okay, okay, I go quickly. Thanks. And, and so, and with non-nestable, uh, stakeable profiles. So, okay, so quickly. Uh, so you see, you, you define a profile, so rather uh, simple actually, and you define channels with a filter information associated to each. So, uh, well, the way I did that was to, to, to put in mail all traffic uh, for SMTP, uh, IMAP, and, and POP, and then, so, okay, you see. So for example, in tunnels, I put HTTPS, but uh, okay, it could be HTTP, it could be web uh, surfing as well, so that's another. Uh, so uh, quickly, and just I did another uh, filter profile. Sorry, where okay, m my point was more to look at the traffic between uh, the different subnets. So uh, basically, there is three group of IP address uh, considered, well, for if you want. There is uh, traffic from the big evil internet, between the big evil internet and uh, the dynamic pool of addresses used by your laptops, uh, DHCP leases, I mean. And there's traffic from the internet to uh, the pool of addresses used by the routers and the infrastructure in the network. and. Uh, yeah, okay, basically that's it. And then the traffic between the dynamic pool and that infrastructure, and ghost, ghost traffic being uh, in small red, uh, let me see, ghost traffic being traffic directed to uh, not attributed uh, IPs in the infrastructure space. Uh, So the nice thing is that you can unselect uh, channels to see more in details uh, some traffic pattern, okay. And so if we just have a look quickly. Sorry, okay, so that's uh, some output obviously uh, we need to, to dig further into to see what kind of traffic uh, to non-used addresses were captured. Uh, this, this traffic is actually pretty interesting, perhaps not this one, but in general, uh, because a, a nice way to, to, to have a trending on what's happening, the temperature at large of the internet and uh, some um, macro events or micro events if for geographic, geographically uh, close to you is to look at traffic where, where nobody is listening in your infrastructure. Uh, and you can see a lot of different patterns and trendings and stuff like that. So, and just like, like last thing uh, for a plugin I talked about, or perhaps not, Port Trucker, which is the only plugin so far uh, existing for, um, for an FCN. And so, okay, the name is rather 
uh, self-evident, the port being to, to track uh, the top talkers' ports, uh, but you may end up, okay, my, my base is uh, plain wrong here because there is only dynamic ports, but as I am not capturing uh, traffic anymore, it keeps updating with, okay, anyway. And just, uh, okay, resolution, okay, I, I have a screenshot for that. N now you have resolution, and that's great, that's, uh, uh, that's new too. Uh, and you can configure, so you have name and AS resolution uh, in NFSN, so you can configure that if you uh, look into lookup.pm uh, in the libexec directory, uh, if you want to use another a server for uh, AES resolution, or change the timeout. For example, the, the timeout 10 seconds is, is rather low, and so you may need to increase that. Uh, okay. Plugins, I said about plugins. There is a patch is floating around uh, to enable uh, old winter um, style error the tools uh, to look further into the traffic captured with uh, NFSN, and there was some discussions. Uh, and there was some discussions to, to, to know if um, that would out to be integrated into the main trunk uh, or, 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 or not. So I, d I don't know uh, what uh, will uh, follow. But anyway, uh, so Old Winter is a, an algorithm used mainly in uh, cl climate changes, uh, right, to spot anomalies in traffic. And so uh, the nice thing with that patch uh, is that you can, sorry, is that you can install that in parallel with an existing NFSN installation. So you are not supposed to break your main, your main NFSN installation and you ca can have that in parallel. Uh, what my machine is doing. Okay, so if we, okay, if we, if we look uh, on the above uh, pants, the traffic, it may, it may not be uh, simple to, to spot anomalies in, in the lower source of traffic, I mean, uh, in the brown part or, okay. And uh, a thing like uh, Old Winter enables to, yeah, just look at the trending and the patterns, the usual patterns, and with that you are able to spot an anomaly which was clearly not visible in the main uh, part, I mean if you see what I mean. Okay, so with that, you may be able to spot, uh, more specifically in less verbose uh, sources of information. Uh, just a concrete example, uh, quickly, quickly. Um, so example below, purely uh, fictional, of course, but if you were to, you, you may want to, to, to have a look at traffic uh, with certain characteristics, I mean, for example, some I ICMP types and code or with certain protocols or stuff like that. Actually, the, 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 the first requirement, uh, we can do nothing for that because there is no uh, IP option which are captured with NetFlow. So we are not able to match traffic based on some option. Anyway, uh, we are able to, to look at ICMP uh, traffic and uh, other protocols. The, the, the last, uh, close is that the packet is sent to a physical or virtual address. Uh, it's interesting to have a look if you have some kind of uh, traffic on, on your network. So ICMP case, uh, with ICMP, just by that, the, the way it works is that uh, to encode ICMP information, uh, indeed, uh, the source code, the so source port, sorry, is always zero. Uh, so when there is uh, ICMP traffic captured, forwarded by a router, it will export a record of that ICMP traffic with a source port of zero, and the code and type uh, are shoehorned into uh, the destination port, okay? So if we have a look uh, at, at the record, the little problem that we have with, with an dump is that for now there is no specific uh, keywords to, to to do queries on the type and code. Uh, so you have to use the actual 16-bit uh, value to do the query. So meaning if you want to, to match type uh, eight 
and 13 and, and so on, and traffic with NF dump, you will, be the, uh, you will end up building a filter like Proto ICMP and port, blah, 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 blah. Take your calc, and that's easy, but that's a bit uh, boring to do. Uh, yeah, okay, adding a, adding a new profile and channel, we saw that. Uh, uh, okay, direction, I said that there is no way to, to, to build a direction out of the records because uh, the way it's done. And by flows, uh, it, it would be cool sometimes to, to, have, to, to work on by flows. By the way, all, all the commercial uh, tools working with NetFlow end up uh, matching by flow. So meaning that you are able to see with one record both sides of the conversation. Uh, and NFDump does not do that. Uh, so you, you can uh, fire your, your favorite uh, script language of yours like Perl or, or Python or, or Ruby or whatever and, and build uh, a small uh, aggregation, by flow aggre aggregator. That, that's quite, uh, that's not hard. I mean, uh, okay, from PCAP to NetFlow, but I said some things about that just BGP, some just a graph. Uh, I, I'm not sure there is actually an interest in, in looking at BGP traffic uh, from a NetFlow perspective. But, um, well, BGP is pretty much in every meaning of the term, like a heartbeat traffic, I mean. Uh, and so this is how it looks like uh, in a regular, with one peer in, in a regular uh, update and withdrawal. Uh, cycle, I mean, so regular exchange of packet. And uh, this is how it looks when there is some EBGP uh, instability, yeah, multi op instability. So, of course, we see, uh, uh, we see a big uh, increase of uh, traffic. So, so, I mean that only by, by looking and uh, if there is a massive or some uh, increase of the updates received, for example, they will end up being uh, in your graph. So uh, with that, I'm not sure, the, I don't know if this is uh, useful or not. Uh, it, yeah, I, okay. But I mean, with that at least, you're able to say, okay, at that time, there is a, a peak, there is an increase of BGP traffic uh, between that and that peers. And what does that mean? So. All you have to do, uh, well, it's up to you to, to, to fire your BGP logs and, and have a look in more detail at the application level, I mean. And just, uh, okay, I, I talked about uh, traffic directed to, to, to the void, so non, uh, so uh, for a very, very low volume, uh, very, very low volume sources, but just in gray, you see patterns in the traffic uh, directed to uh, non-routed, no addressed, uh, yeah, non-used addresses or non-routed or discard or diverted, whatever you, you end up with. And so we can see that in, in gray, we can see uh, that the patterns during time, yeah, okay, agree, you will read the slides, agree, which is a pretty cool ag aggregation stuff and net flow. Flow spec is a very cool uh, thing, but okay, I have no, no more time. Just uh, four, four, three links actually, but uh, on the NetFlow uh, uh, site, and there is a cool, the, the, the last link is a, a repository, sorry, of all, all commercial and open, open source tools working with NetFlow basically, quite extensive. So, okay, thanks, thanks for your attention. Sorry for being uh, long and boring and whatever. And, Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just la la last word, but my, my plan was actually to, to spend way more time in the, with the interactive data, and I suppose to have more time tha than that. And, uh, okay, sorry, sorry for that. But uh, there is a lot to do in the analysis part, obviously, and okay, uh, thanks.